what am I gonna do with these cars? So the 460, got a VSC, check VSC, check PCS, cruise doesn't work. Um, essentially when anything happens, there's a check engine light or a problem, it's gonna trigger all of this. What this means is you cannot go over fifth gear. I scanned the code and determined that there is a knock sensor error. Car only has 123,000 miles. I rarely drive it and it's frustrating. Typically, when you have a knock sensor code, it is caused by leaking coolant from the valley plate. The valley plate leak is common on the IS, any V8 really that Lexus has. It has a tendency underneath all this, under the covers. Um, buried under here is a, is a coolant plate and there's coolant inside and it leaks long story short uh, the coolant leak typically gets into the harnesses of the knock sensors of which there are four two on this side two on this side it's about a five hour job to replace them um, not too bad uh, essentially you know we're just taking all this off all this wiring kind of moving it over there pulling the manifold and then we'll see the knock sensors in the harness. Well, this car doesn't lose any coolant. And I'm not sure if the valley plate was ever done prior to me owning it. That'll be TBD. However, this car just has non-stop problems. I'm so frustrated. I can't sell it because it doesn't, it doesn't work right. If I do fix it, then I'm not going to sell it because then it's going to work right. And no one's going to buy it because it's just a regular LS to everybody. Even though it's the cleanest 07 LS L with the Ottoman, probably in the country. Um, it's a nice car when it's running. However, it's not running right. We'll get to that later. The other issue is, if you saw my last videos, we replaced the ball joints. Every suspension piece over here has been replaced. I'm still getting a, a pretty severe clunking when I turn the wheel all the way to the left uh, or to the right at a stop. Like if I'm backing out of the driveway or doing very slow speed movement, you'll get this huge knocking noise, but there's literally nothing left to replace. It's all tight and I don't know what's wrong. So it doesn't affect anything. I mean, the car drives perfectly straight. Highway speeds is cool. Everything's great. So I don't know. So we'll figure this out. Uh, there's no videos online on do the knock sensors. Um, if you do the valley plate, the problem is the direct injectors and the harnesses and the plugs tend to crack and break. Uh, hopefully we'll, we won't have to do the valley plate. We'll find out once we get in there, but we'll talk about all that um, when I get this inside and taken apart. Moving on to the next trash can, we have the ISF. Again, a car I very rarely drive. Well, today, my third supercharger belt ripped, broke, done. Supercharger's fine, obviously, but the belt just keeps shredding. It's the third one. In addition to that, I'm still getting codes for injectors, for fueling problems. Car runs perfectly fine and un not under any boost. But once you hit boost, it, all sorts of problems. So I'm seriously debating pulling the supercharger, putting it back to stock, and selling it. I am done, done, done. It's a nice car otherwise. But again, what are we gonna do? We're gonna put the belt on, a third supercharger belt, and then have problems with injectors. It could not even be the injectors. It might just be an injector code or a fueling code and it could be air leak, MAF sensor, tune, who knows. So some decisions to be made here as well. Again, car is 131,000. I haven't even put 10,000 miles on it, I don't think, since I've owned it. I think I got it around 125, 123, somewhere in there if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I don't wanna drive it if it's, if it's normally aspirated. I mean, it's kind of boring to be honest, so. I don't know. I mean, that'd make the most sense. Get it back to stock, 
sell the supercharger and all that and then sell the car separate and make more money that way but we'll see again car drives fine as long as you're not in any sort of boost so let's get the ls in the garage we'll pull out the es we'll drive that around maybe feel a little bit better just gonna drive this thing a little bit get all the little stones that are stuck in the slicks out and then drive it back park it but uh yeah so we're an e72 basically you see the gauge there in the upper right so essentially e85 um and the car is technically tuned for that so you want to see what a, what a na supercharged car is on e85 just uh For everyone wondering if they should run E85 in their NA cars, I mean, it's not recommended because that's the fuel is nasty. It just messes everything up, your whole fuel system. So. said I mean it doesn't trigger the codes in this situation it's it's only under boost so it has to be I mean it could be anything really it could be the it's not the pump because it has a surge tank so there's enough fuel in there to um, supply everything so it's either has to be an injector that got gummed up from E85 like I said before but it cleared up and kind of came back uh, or the tune possibly but typically if it's a tune problem I mean it'll happen all the time not just occasionally but yeah I don't know so we'll get this back and just kind of park it for now and I gotta figure out the LS situation first non-sport mode pull for you. Oh uh, yeah, super inspiring. Let me open the exhaust, the mufflers are actually closed. Let me open those up and get a little bit more bass in the video. Not like it's going to change anything, but... Well, as if things couldn't get any worse, the lift just broke. This cable just snapped right here. There it is. I don't know if this got frayed and broke somehow or what. Luckily, it was only a foot off the ground and then it just kind of fell. But when it rains, it pours, I guess. So now I gotta figure out how to get the car down, how to get this back up again. I guess I'm gonna have to jack it up and then see if I can replace the cable, I suppose, if they sell these cables or measure them or something, I don't know. But that uh, is definitely not great. Well, I was planning on taking the ES out but this thing has a misfire now so that's like every car I'm touching is not doing well I was going to go for a nice little drive in this thing show how the uh, stick shift is but it's misfiring pretty bad so I just got to turn around I guess 
have no idea what this problem could be. I, I really hate this. This is in second gear. Like, there's just so much play, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's just like stumbling. Trying to sell this thing for like an outrageous price, but obviously nobody wants it. We've gotten offers for like five grand, so that's not too bad. But I can't sell it obviously now because it's misfiring. No check engine light though, so I don't know. Maybe it's just been sitting too long. what to do probably just leave this thing stuck to be honest I couldn't find anyone to really do the turbo kit or the manifolds so it's fun stock I mean throw a nice two and a half inch exhaust on here and it could be a fun car just to drive around in Well, I gotta now do the lift too, so we gotta fix whatever that, that cable, replace it, I guess, figure out, measure it and see how long it is and order a new one. But I just wanna take this, drive this a little bit more, see if it clears up at all. Yeah, even when you rev it in neutral, it kinda, you can hear it stumbling. Alright, well, let's get the LS in the garage and go to bed for the day, I think. Re reconvening tomorrow and the next video will be just kind of taking that thing apart. I'm going to dedicate a whole video to that. So That's, uh, that's all I got for today. Thanks, guys.